welcome back to our lecture series on advanced hydraulics. We are in the third module on varied flows. Last class we had briefly mentioned on the gradually varied flow and how to classify it. We have not complete, completed the portion on classification of gradually varied flow. So, we will continue that classification of gradually varied flow in today's lecture. So, if you recall in the last class, in the last class we suggested about the dynamic equation for gradually varied flow using section factors and conveyance factors. So, I hope you recall them, the section factors and conveyance factors. So, this is your conveyance factor this and these are the sections factor for critical flow as well as for non critical flow all those things we had described it in the last class. In this way you can describe the dynamic equation for gradually varied flow. So, the dynamic equation it gives you the slope of the water surface profile. We also suggested you what is meant by critical slope that is regarding the bed slope of the channel. If you recall the bed slope of the channel. for any channel, the bed slope. It can be considered as a critical slope, it can be considered as a mild slope, also it can be considered as a steep slope, horizontal slope, adverse slope. All these things we had described it in the last class. So, today we will see what are the other things, especially in the last class we um, in the last class we suggested you in the dynamic equation, in the dynamic equation one minus z c by z whole square. So, these things in this equation for d y by d x to be positive. The criteria for that we had discussed it in the last class that is for breakwater uh, for the backwater sorry for example, backwater curves how the new if the numerator is positive then the denominator also have to be positive or if the numerator is negative then the denominator also have to be negative like that those things we had described it in the last class. Now, in today's lecture, we will see how will the conditions be for drawdown curves. You can simply answer them. Just we call the last class thing how we describe it for the backwater curves. Similarly, for drawdown curves, what are the conditions? That is, you require d y by d x is equal to negative. Therefore, the conditions are one minus k n by k whole square. This should be greater than 0 as well as 1 minus z c by z whole square, this should be less than 0. This is one criteria. Similarly, one another criteria is 1 minus k n by k whole square, this should be less than 0 and 1 minus z c by z whole square this should be greater than 0. If these two conditions are there, then you will get drawdown curves the gradually varied flow. For the gradually varied flow, the water surface profiles will give you drawdown curves. So, this uh, then what are the physical meaning of these conditions? Let us consider the case 1. 
your case 1 is c 1 minus k n by k whole square. How did I write the in the last slide? That is 1 minus k n by k whole square greater than 0. And 1 minus z c by z whole square should be less than 0. What does this mean? So, k n by k whole square that is 1 minus k n by k whole square this quantity has to be greater than 0. That implies that your normal depth of flow will be less than the actual depth of flow. Why? Is not it? Say in the channel, say if this is your normal depth line, then your flow may be somewhere here, this y may be greater than, this is y, this is y n. Not only that, what does this mean here? 1 minus z c by z whole square should be less than 0. That is, this quantity z c by z, it should be greater than 1, then only this can become negative, is not it? So, what does that mean? Your y c is greater than the depth of flow. So, this implies, what does this imply? It implies supercritical flow. That is your flow is now supercritical. Also, let us suggest that your y n is less than y, your y c is greater than y. So, y n less than y less than y c. This will be the condition of the flow and this in this gives you supercritical flow. this gives you supercritical flow in a steep channel right it gives you supercritical flow in a steep channel why this is a uh, supercritical flow yn is less than yc therefore this is a steep channel similarly in the case 2 one can easily elaborate it so, 1 minus k n by k whole square, this should be less than 0 and 1 minus z c by z whole square, this should be greater than 0. So, the condition arrive, what is coming into the picture here is that your normal depth is now greater than the actual depth of flow, then only this quantity k n by k can become greater than 1, right. So, and from here 1 minus z c by z whole square greater than 0, the condition is that your critical flow should be less than your actual flow depth. So, what does this imply? This gives you that your y n is greater than y, which itself is greater than the critical flow. So, this is if y c is less than y, it automatically gives you a subcritical flow and also y n is greater than y c. So, this is a subcritical flow in a mild slope channel. Okay. Like this you can describe the flow conditions. This is how you give the means you can infer from the relationships given in the dynamic equation. So, just recall the various bed slopes the we mentioned in the last class about the critical slope, mild slope, steep slope and all. So, we will just I will again enumerate it. So, the various bed slope.
So, if your actual bed slope is 0, if it is less than the critical slope, then this is called mild slope channel and we give the abbreviated letter m for mild slope conditions. So, if your S 0 it is greater than the critical slope, this is called steep slope channel and we give the abbreviated representation S. So, if your actual bed slope is equal to the critical slope, then such bed slope channels are called critically slope channels. We give the symbolic letter C. If your actual bed slope is 0, so that is there is no slope at all, they are called horizontally slope channels represented by H. And if the bed slope is less than 0, they are given as adverse slope channels as A. Okay. So, now these bed conditions are given and for any given flow situations, one can easily give three zones. Say, if this is your channel bed, say for the given discharge, if this is the critical depth, you can for the considerable reach, you can draw the critical depth line. So, that critical depth line is there and if the normal depth line is given like this, then this depth is your normal depth, this depth is your critical depth, right. And if you see in such channels, there are now three zones, zone 1, this is zone 1, this is zone 2 and this is zone 3. So, for all the channels we mentioned in the previous slide, the previous slide we mentioned here, the mild slope, steep slope, critical slope, adverse slope, one can easily identify three zones of flow there. So, zone, zone 1 represents the region above the top line. So, your top, top line, it can be either the critical depth line or the normal depth line, whichever case it may be. If it is a supercritical flow, you know that critical depth line is above the normal depth line. So, therefore, the above, whichever region is above the upper line, that region is considered as zone 1. Zone 2 is the region in between the normal depth line and critical depth line. The zone 3 is given as the region between the bed and the lower line. So, like that you can easily identify three zones. So, now based on these three zones, why uh, Okay, I will just write it for your benefit here. Zone 1, space above the topmost line. So, zone 2, space between critical depth line and normal depth line, zone 3, space between channel bed and lower line. So, why I am classifying is that your water surface, it can exist in any of these three regions. Now, based on the channel slope, channel bed slope and the existence of the water surface in those in any of this region, 
you can easily classify your gradually varied flow profiles. So, we are now going to classify the gradually varied flow profiles based on these three zones as well as the type of bed slope of the channel. Like that we are now going to categorize them. So, we have already suggested the mild slope channels, steep slope channel, critically slope channels, horizontally slope uh, horizontally slope channels, adversely slope channels. So, in each of these things, in the mild channel also, the water surface may exist in any of the three zones. So, we have given you three zones. Zone 3, zone 2, zone 1. So, we have given you these three zones. So, your water surface can exist in any of these three zones even in a mild slope channel or even in a steep slope channel, even in critical flow and we will ask you what about in the horizontal, horizontally slope channel and adversely slope channels. So, a possible maximum possible classifications one can make is that if I give the zone number as suffix to the abbreviated letter. So, the maximum possible classifications one can infer is m 1, m 2, m 3, s 1, s 2, s 3, h 1, h 2, h 3, c 1, c 2, c 3, a 1, a 2, a 3 like that 15 possible classifications can be theoretically now you can visualize them or theoretically not theoretically we can say suggest that based on the combinations one can infer 15 possible classifications for the gradually varied flow. Now, let me ask you from the from these classifications do the classification A 1 and H 1 whether they exist, whether such classification is possible H 1 exist, why? Now, the question is why? So, what is your response for that? You now casually think on the thing you will see that say if consider the horizontally slope channel. For the horizontally slope channel your bed slope is equal to 0. Definitely you will be having critical depth line CDL that is there available for the given discharge. What about normal depth? So, whether normal depth will be there in the computation? What is your uh, uh, inference in this? You will see that y n is equal to some infinite value. So, there is no at. So, there is no normal depth for horizontally slope channels, it is not possible. So, theoretically it is not possible to get normal depth for horizontally slope channels. Similarly, for adverse slope channels, if this is your adverse slope channel, you can infer the critical depth line, but y n is not possible in adversely slope channels. So, 
just recall your Manning's equation. Your Manning's equation, which suggested that Q is equal to. Okay, I will just change the color for your benefit. So Q is equal to one by n a r to the power of two by three. S not to the power of half. This was the Manning's equation for uniform flow. If you recall that, as S not is equal to zero in horizontally sloped channels, your Y n cannot be inferred. Similarly, as S not is negative, you cannot have the root of a negative value and subsequently compute Y n. That is also not possible. So Y n is not possible in adversely sloped channels as well. Like that, you can uh, you can infer the things. So therefore, in horizontally in horizontally slope as well as adversely adversely slope channels. We mentioned that there does uh, there do not exist any um, normal depth line, or there is no normal depth uh, for the adversely slope channels as well as horizontally slope channel. So you can easily suggest now there are only two regions or only two zones for flow in such type of channels. Now, they are classified as zone 2 and zone 3. Therefore, in these two channels, there exists only zone 2 and zone 3. So, there is no zone 1 in horizontally sloped and adversely sloped channels. So, when you devise or when you consider your classifications of the gradually varied flow, you have to keep these things in mind. So, the most common types of channels, they are mild slope channels as well as steep slope channels. These two are the most prominent one. You can now suggest that say a mild slope channel is the one where your normal depth line is above the critical depth line that is normal depth is greater than the critical depth. So, therefore, you can have say this is mild slope channel. So, zone 1 of the mild slope channel, zone 2, zone 3. So, if any of the water surface profiles exist here in these zones, say they can be subsequently considered now M 1, M 2, M 3. Similarly, in a steep slope channel, you will see that the normal depth line is below the critical depth line that is the normal depth is it is smaller than the critical depth. You can now easily see or you can easily classify three zones zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. This is a steep slope channel. You can also give the corresponding water pro uh, surface profiles or if the water surface exists in this zone, those water surfaces are considered as S 1 profiles. Here in this zone, it is considered as S 2 profile and here in this zone, it is considered as S 3 profile. Similarly, in the uh, critical slope channels, or critically slope channel. So, what is the peculiarity of critically slope channel? Your 
critical depth line is same as your normal depth line. That is your critical depth and normal depth both are same. So, then you will see that the region above the critical depth or normal depth line they are called as zone 1 and the region below that this is called as zone 3. So, zone 2 is missing in critically sloped channels. Okay. So, therefore, you cannot give so water for the for, for, uh, profiles and all C 1 and C 3, C 2 is not existing in such situations you will see them. So, adversely sloped channels or horizontally sloped channels so, this is C, this is horizontally sloped channels you will have two regions as mentioned earlier H 2 and H 3 adversely sloped channel A, so A 2 and A 3. You can also mention, you can also consider channel slopes as sustaining and non sustaining slopes. It, these are self explanatory terms non sustaining So, what does uh, what does this mean? A channel slope it is called sustaining if its slope falls or if its channel slope or if the bed of the channel if it falls they are called sustaining type of channels. If it is not falling they are called non sustaining type of channels. So, let me ask you what is, I means where do you encounter sustaining channels out of the 5 classifications we made for the channel slope that is critical, adverse, horizontal, mild and steep. Out of this 5 which are the sustaining slope channels and which are the non sustaining slope channels. Yeah? as it is explanatory uh, self explanatory thing non sustaining or sustaining channels or sustaining slopes they are seen in critical flow mild slip channel uh, mild uh, mild slope channels as well as steep slope channels. So, for the sustaining channels the sustaining slopes are the sustaining slopes are positive the non sustaining slope channels. So, their sustaining slopes will be negative and they are found usually in horizontal and adverse slope conditions. So, let me give you a detailed uh, figurative descriptions say if I uh, suggest that based on the various types of channel flow how your profiles looks. Let us see that. So, let me suggest here first beginning with the horizontal horizontally sloped channels. Let us consider the three zones available zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. So, the horizontally sloped channel it will look like this it will have the critical depth line and the bed slope like this. So, there is no water profile see if I make it in a tabular form like this 
just for your benefit I am just giving it like this. So, zone 1 it will uh, means there will not be any water surface profile in zone 1 for the horizontally sloped channels. So, we can easily suggest now this portion does not exist. In the zone 2, in zone 2 your what there is uh, you can draw the critical depth line and zone 2 what does it represent. So, it suggests to you. So, this is your zone 2 and this is the zone 3 of the horizontally sloped channel. So, your water surface will be like this somewhere here like this right it should exist in the second zone. So, it should be something like this. So, this is called H 2 okay. that water surface profile is called H 2. Similarly, you will see that if the water surface profile exists in the zone 3 that profile would be something of this form and you can give this name this as H 3. This profile can be named as H 3. Okay. So, you can say this is zone 2, this is zone 3, zone 2, zone 3, zone 2, zone 3, the slope channel. So, a mild slow channel. Again, let me draw the bed, say bed may be like this. Your critical depth line is below the normal depth line, right. So, you have three zones 1, 2, 3. And in the zone 1, if your water surface profile exists in zone 1, that is called M 1 and it may be something of this form like this. So, this water surface profile is called M 1 profile. Similarly, if in the chat again you draw the same thing zone 1, 2, 3 and if your water surface profile exists in zone 2. So, it may be something of this following form and this is this water surface profile is called M 2 because it is existing the zone 2 and it is in the following form. So, it is in a mild channel. So, this is M 2. Similarly, for the three regions if your water surface profile is something of this form. It is existing in the third region and it is given that water surface profile is given as M 3. One can easily visualize for the steep slope channels also. For the steep slope channels, this is your channel bed and for steep slope channels your normal depth line is below the critical depth line fine and for such conditions the flow to exist in zone 1. So, here the zones are 1, 2, 3. So, the zones are so from the critical depth a profile exists like this usually a jump occurs from the normal depth line to the critical depth then a gradually varied flow profile occurs and this profile is called S 1. Similarly, if there is a change in uh, change in water surface in the zone 2 of the steep slope channel 
this water surface profile is called S 2. One can easily witness the S 3 curve as well. So, S 3 will be something of this form. Okay. So, like that for horizontal miles and steep slope, I have just mentioned it. You can easily think for the horizontal and adverse slope channels. Do I need to describe it here? Okay, I will just briefly show it again. For the critically slope channel, for the critically slope channel, you will have both the critical depth line and normal depth line as the same, both are same. This is zone 1 and this is zone 3 and whatever water surface profile is there, this is called C 1 curve, it is in the zone 1. Zone 2 it is not possible and in the zone 3, you will see that this particular curve, it is called C 3. Okay. For the adverse slope channels, definitely for A 1 is not possible as we have mentioned it earlier. So, I can just omit that portion. In the zone 2, for the adverse slope channels, the critical depth line is like this. So, this is your water surface profile that exists in the zone 2 and it is called A 2. Similarly, if it exists in the third zone, this water surface profile is called A 3. So, like that one can easily visualize various water surface profiles. So, these are the classifications of so, these are the classifications of gradually varied flow profiles. So, what are the theoretical uh, possible things? Gradually, you can have H 2 and H 3 for the horizontally slope channels. You can have M 1 profile, M 2 profile and M 3 profile for the mild slope channels. For the steep slope channels, you can have S 1, S 2 and S 3 profiles. For the critically slope channels, you can have C 1 and C 3. For the adverse slope channels, you can have A 2 and A 3 water surface profiles. So, this curve as you have seen the various profiles, I have just arbitrarily drawn like this. Still, in some situations and all, you will see why the curvature of this water surfaces one can easily determine, you can determine curvature of water surface profiles, how the curve should be. So, this is given by say Professor Srivastava in his book on flow through open channels. He published the book in 2008 in that he has suggested that curvature of water surface, this is nothing but the derivative of the slope of the water surface, right? d squared by by d x square. Now, based on this value that is based on the value of d squared by by d x square, suppose if this is a positive quantity. So, that is the slope is increasing, slope is increasing. in the direction of flow. d 
squared by d x squared, if this is a negative value, you are having a decrease in water surface slope. So, there is a decrease in water surface slope in direction of flow. So, you can easily identify the expression for d squared y by d x squared. You know d y by d x is equal to s 0 into 1 minus k n by k whole squared by 1 minus z c by z whole square. This you are well aware by this time now. So, the what could be the second derivative? You take any arbitrary dimension channels or for example, rectangular channel, what happens? You substitute the conveyance factors, section factors for the rectangular channel, substitute that here derive and again derive it with respect to x, what is the quantity you are going to get? You can do it as a homework and let see that. Anyhow, I am not going to derive them in this particular class, I am just going to write the final expression. So, d squared y by d x squared as given in process reversal's book, d squared by this is equal to s 0 into d y by d x 3 times y square into y n cube that is normal depth minus y c cube critical depth y cube minus y c cube the whole quantity square. So, a relationship for d squared y by d x square d x square has been derived in that particular book. I am just showing it here. Why we are showing it here is that from this one can easily picture various features of the water surface curve. So, let me ask you. your d squared y by d x square, this will be positive when, when all at which all times it can be positive. It can be positive if d y by d x is positive and your normal depth, please look into the thing, your normal depth and phi n should be greater than the critical depth. If this is true, then d squared y by d x square d x squared will be a positive value. So, what does that mean? What does that physically mean? it is a backwater curve in a mild slope channel. Second condition I would like to ask you, d squared y by d x square, this can be positive again, if d y by d x is equal to negative and your y n should be less than y c. If this is also true, then also d squared y by d x squared will be a positive. So, it represents a drawdown curve right? in a steep slope channel. The other thing d squared y by d x squared is equal to a negative value if d y by d x is equal to negative and y n is greater than y c. So, this represents a drawdown curve in a mild slope channel. 
similarly d squared y by d x squared is equal to positive sorry negative if d y by d x is positive and y n is less than y c. So, one can easily see these things now. You can also plot d y by d x versus depth of flow using the relationship of the using that relationship using this particular relationship or you can also plot the following thing d y by d x versus y say for mild slope channel it has been observed that. So, this is referred from Srivastava's book on open channel hydraulics. Say, if I plot d y by d x with respect to depth, say if this is the quantity of 0 depth and 0 d y by d x, this is the origin, then as you this is the depth of flow. Let us suggest this as the critical depth. Let us suggest this as the normal depth. You will see that the quantity d y by d x it will vary with respect to y with in the following form. See like this it may go then as y decreases d y by d s goes d y by d x goes into the asymptote in the negative direction. So, this quantity is approximately equal to the bed slope as 0. So, you can infer from this figure for larger depth d y by d x is approximately equal to your bed slope then zone 1. So, you, this is your zone 1. So, zone 1 and zone 3 which is zone 3. So, here in the zone 3 the d y by d x curve is something of this form. So, like this you can easily suggest now say the d y by d x versus y when you plotted it, it is understood now that zone 1 and zone 3 are having positive d y by d x. Okay. Zone 3 is zone 2 is having negative d y by d x. So, this is always true or it is always true in such thing because from that uh, curvature equation itself one can easily plot it and see them. So, that is zone 2 will be always having a negative d y by d x or it means that it is always it always assists a drawdown curve. You cannot have a backwater curve in zone 2. Similarly, zone 1 and zone 3 they always assist backwater means or the race in the race in the water surface things. So, the flow profiles one can easily visualize say flow profiles you can see that the m 1 profiles your m 1 profiles it can be seen say if there is a uniformly flowing channel and if you construct a dram uniformly flowing mild slope channel say this is your critical depth line this is your normal depth line then the m1 curve is observed in the upstream of this dam in the upstream of this dam 
in the following form you will see this is your m1 curve similarly you will see m2 profiles in the actual field in region say if there is such mild slope channel that is either falling into another tank or where where there is water saved and if the depth of water in this tank or on this chan uh, another channel if it is below the normal depth line then your water surface profile will be like this and this is given as your m2 profile right so these things are observed in the actual field situations your m3 profiles they are witness say in for the in the uniformly flowing channel if you keep a shutter if you just close the shutter and just mild uh, slow i uh, mean if you just open it for a small portion water will gush in like this and this water profile is there this will be an m3 gradually varied flow profile similarly one can visualize S1 profiles. If there is an obstruction in the gradually varied flow, so this is your normal depth line, this is your critical depth line, the water surface, it will cause a jump and it will come like this. This will be your S1 profile. Okay. So, like this you can see various type of profiles in the actual field condition. So, uh, let me now stop here today let us conduct the quiz for the today's lecture the following portion and we will continue the next lecture next day. So, for the quiz just now only we discussed on the thing if a dam is constructed across a uniformly flowing mild slope channel describe about the flow profile and its type with a sketch this is your first question that is if a dam is constructed across a uniformly flowing mild slope channel describe about the flow profile and its type with a sketch your second question do A1 and H1 pro flow profiles exist? Do A1 and H1 flow profiles exist in theory? Is it possible? And give the reason, whatever whether if it if it is if it exists, you give the reason. If does if it does not exist, give the reason. Specific means we have to give substantiate it. Now, the next question is from the expression for d squared y by dx squared as mentioned in today's lecture, infer whether there exist positive values for dy by dx in zone 2 of a mild slope channel. Give reasons. So, all are very simple questions today. You can just answer them in 3 4 minutes and just return back the sheets. So, the solution for today quiz you can see that if a dam is constructed in a mild slope channel normal depth this is your critical depth line in the upstream of the dam you will see the water surface profile racing like this and this water surface profile is called m1 water surface profile okay so this is in the mild slope channel your next question we asked is do a1 and h1 flow profiles exist what is your reason i hope everyone have might have answered this thing 
or the horizontally sloped channels or for the adversely sloped channels, your critical depth line exists. Fine? And we suggested that there is no zone 1 for horizontally sloped channels as well as adversely sloped channels. There exist only zone 2 and zone 3. So, whatever water surface profile is there above the critical depth line that comes under zone 2. So, similarly in both the cases horizontal as well as adversely sloped channels. And you know why zone 1 is not existing because you cannot evaluate normal depth for horizontally sloped and adversely sloped channels. Okay. So, these are the this is the solution for the question. Your third question from the expression for d squared y by d x squared as mentioned in today's lecture, infer whether there exist positive values for d y by d x in zone 2 of a mild slope channel. You give the results. We had asked you to do that. So, your answer is d y by d x will be always negative in zone 2 of a mild slope channel. In fact, for steep slope channels also d y by d x will be negative in zone 2 that will come will or we will, um, you can infer it on your own also you can verify it. So, d y by d x will be always negative in such situations. So, there would not be positive d y by d x value. So, you uh, what is the reason you have already drawn that curve you can just go back to that lecture and show to you say in this curve d y by d x versus depth say below normal depth between normal depth and critical depth your slope it is going in the negative direction and it goes to an minus infinity below critical depth the slope d y by d x profile is being shown like this it is in the positive side. So, these are today's this is. So, we have discussed on the classification of gradually varied flow we will see some of some more other aspects on this thing. We will also solve an example problem in the next class. Thank you.